The Praetorium and Mr. John Tomatis is here to tell us all about what the University of Victoria will offer. So let's give him a big round of applause. Right, good afternoon to all of you. Um, I just want to quickly make 100% sure that you can hear me. Okay, there we go. All right, um, just want to share that. All right, good afternoon to, to each and every one um, of the viewers that are obviously now viewing this uh, presentation. Just a word of thank you to uh, Swakogman, um private school. Um, thank you very much for the invitation and making this possible. I'm sure there will probably be viewers not just within the Namibian borders, but also abroad. So thank you very much for tuning in and um, for giving me or affording me the opportunity. Now let's start and get right into it. Um, grade 12 learners um, or learners that are about to exit school. Um, I know you're at the brink of your final schooling days. Um, where from and now, where are you headed to? Where are you going to study? Have you thought of those things? I mean, these are things that, that need to be kept in mind in order to um, obviously for your future ahead. Now, with that being said, um, I want you just to, to visualize and just understand in you what I'm saying. Not everyone can and not everyone will end up studying at universities, not just in South Africa, but globally. There are only so many spaces available at all universities across the globe. Now, with that being said, um, not, not everyone can and will become doctors and accountants and lawyers and engineers. Um, that's why there are people within the technical industry as well, uh, who's going to become the electricians, the auto electricians, who's gonna become the plumbers, as an example. And uh, just, just, just a heads up on plumbers, um, some of them even make more money than engineers, accountants, and lawyers. But that's if you do it right and you add value. And once you get that right and you get that combination right, then people will realize and see. And you know what? Before you know it, you will definitely make a mark. Um, so you do not need to have a title to make it out there. And with that also being said, that's why there are private institutions, um, University of Technologies, the old Technicons, um, which is obviously in your case, the Polytech in Namibia. There's also private institutions and they do offer qualifications which are up to standard, but there are also those that will tell you what you wanna hear, not what you should be hearing. And the most important part of it all is that you, that you are aware of what the kind of qualifications you're going to obtain. When you walk out after two, three, maybe four years with that piece of paper in your hand, and the big word that I you know, accompany that with is that you are employable. You don't want to be told when applying for an interview or for a, for a vacancy at a company being told, you know what, no, your qualification is not up to standard. Sorry, you are not shortlisted. I mean, on the end day, you want to be eligible to apply, be shortlisted, call in for an interview, and perhaps even get that job on the end day. So, the next thing I would like to just share with you is with that what I was just that with that what I just said is in the new world of work, security lies not in employment, but in employability. Now these are the kind of challenges I've just spoken about, but there are a couple of others also you should be aware of. Um, have you made the right subject choices um, over from from um, the general batch you had to a specific few? Um, obtaining high enough scores for a bachelor's pass to study at a university, applying early, and I'll get to that shortly, being admitted to the University of Pretoria in this case, not dropping out when a going gets tough, you know what they say, easy come, easy go, um, and preparing for and getting a sustainable job. Now, why choose the University of Pretoria? for excellence, qualifications, internationally accredited, a diversity of degrees across the board of nine faculties. And obviously um, you can't see me now and I usually make a big fuss of this, but you're going there for fun. But I also believe in hard work and hard play in that order. I believe you, one should work hard, you're there to study and qualify, 
but also enjoy your life. Once student life is over, it's over. Um, but the focus point here is that you are here to study or to study at a university or tertiary institution, and that is the main goal in the end. Now, the University of Pretoria has a FLY initiative, and the FLY stands for the finish line is yours, which will assist you in the shortest time possible to qualify with your degree. If it's a three-year degree, we want to assist you to graduate within the shortest time possible. We also have a ready for work program, which will assist you to be ready for employment after graduation, as well as assist you with um, being employed and getting landing that, that job within a specific area of specialization. So we have these resources to um, available to you at no extra cost. I would also like you to, to go and do a bit of research on Junior Tiki. Um, Junior Tiki came to life this year, it will be 15 years ago. Um, it's really about identifying the right caliber students. So learners um, from, from the year where you choose your, your subjects um, and start limiting them to, to whatever they may be, you can become part of the Junior Tiki Club. Um, in a South African terms, it's from grade 10, you can become a member. Um, you can also become part of the Ambassador Society from first to final year students. And you can also, in the end, once you've graduated at the University of Pretoria, be a junior ticket alumni. And an alumni is a graduate, and this is in any case also where you start building up contacts. You get in contact, you might have events you can attend. And, you know, should you be an IT, um, well, a, a, a owner of an IT company would like to maybe perhaps employ IT graduates, um, then obviously the alumni um, office can get in contact with you and obviously have you make contact with the, with the relevant people within the IT field and obviously people around. So these are just one or, one or two things that you can belong to. Like I also said, we prepare learners to make a smooth transition from high school to university and to apply successfully for tertiary studies. The junior took you also career and study um, guidance offered, uh, preparation for national benchmarking tests, skills development. We have summer schools and winter schools. We have grade 11 empowerment weeks, grade 12 preparation conferences you can attend. There are special bursaries offered through the junior ticket office. We also have faculty information sessions and perhaps also adding to that faculty open day. So should you wish to perhaps um, want to study veterinary science at the University of Pretoria, you can get invited to attend the Become a Vet weekend, where you will be taken to the vet sciences faculty at Onerstepoort and be shown from A to Z what gets done at the faculty. Just sort of more of an eye open and give you more of an idea and a hands-on of what to expect. Then we also have provincial outreach events. We have a junior tech magazine, which um, gets released biannually per year. So you can either receive it in hard copy or in soft copy of all the faculties, all the happenings and on campus and so forth. And then there's also a Junior Tiki app you can download. Now the Junior Tiki app, um, there, there was a previous app which you obviously need to, um, to delete and uninstall. There's a new Junior Tiki app. There's, it can either um, be downloaded on the Android phones or Apple iPhones. Um, so please go online, register for them download them and you can also register for Junior Tiki via the um, app itself. Now, the Junior Tiki app, you will receive access to Junior Tiki registration forms for 2022 and beyond. You'll receive information at the time when relevant for events and also get invited um, prior to events in order to RSVP. Receive regular notifications to prepare you for university. Information is posted on the app for different career options. The user-friendly information structure makes it easy to navigate and then also share information on Junior Tiki app with family, friends via social media. And then information is also shared in different content and such as text, videos, infographics, images, PDFs, and web links. So should you wanna become part of the Junior Tiki um, club, which costs you not a single cent, you can visit our website on up.ac.za forward slash junior ticky or you can download the app and register in that manner why choose why choose up obviously for unmatched quality now 
We're one of the largest research intensive universities in South Africa. We also ranked in the top 1% internationally in 10 fields at present, agricultural sciences, clinical medicine, engineering, uh, microbiology, social sciences, and so forth. We also ranked in the top five of all South African universities, We're ranked in the top 2% of universities globally. Our School of Engineering in the Faculty of Engineering Built Environment and IT is ranked first in South Africa and in Africa. The Faculty of Law ranked in the top 100 of the world university rankings according uh, to 2020 by subject. And then we also ranked for those that are interested perhaps in accounting sciences to become chartered accountants, you're definitely at the right place. The University of Pretoria has been ranked number one um, by the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants um, for CAs qualifying with the exam with 100% pass rate in 2020. And we had a 99% pass rate last year in 2021. So we've been now for a couple of years, number one in South Africa for the guys who passed the board exams um, and we had the highest pass rate. So you're definitely at the right place. Our requirements might be um, one of the highest. I stand to be corrected, maybe the highest in South Africa at all universities, but that's why we are number one at this point in time and we prepare you for that field and that career um, field you should well wouldn't want to specialize in and then the department of material sciences and metallurgical engineering is ranked number one in south africa 93 percent of our students are either employed or studying postgraduate six months after graduation and then we have an 82.4 percent examination pass rate and this is all uh, thanks to the um, FLY initiative at TICS, where we guide, assist, and help students, and even yourself in time, to graduate within the shortest period of time. Years ago, there were, across the board at all universities, around about a 30% dropout rate within the first six months at varsity. We used, we used to call it the July handicap, but nonetheless, but that has definitely, um, the pass rate has increased with that initiative that came to life. Um, we also rated top of all South African universities for research outputs, according to the Department of Higher um, Education and Teaching since 2019. And then 67% of our UP academic staff have either have doctorate degrees, so you're definitely in good hands. Now, world first and the first in Africa, um, a team at the Faculty of Health Sciences performed the world's first middle ear transplant using 3D printed bones. And then researchers were also part of an international team that used a global network of antennas to make the first image of a black hole. And then a lioness gave birth to two cups conceived by non-surgical artificial insemination, the first in the world thanks to a team of researchers from the Mammal Research Institute and the Faculty of Veterinary Sciences at Ongerstepoort. And then we are also the first, um, the University of Pretoria also has the first client service robot known to be used in any university library in Africa. Um, we are also the first university in Africa to collaborate with initiatives um, for science, innovation, territories and um, economy, and the Mount Pele University of Excellence, um, the eyesight moose. Sport, for those that are sports junkies, we have 38 different sports codes and clubs you can become part of, whether you participate socially, um, nationally, provision, provincially, internationally, you're more than welcome to participate. Um, we've got rugby, cricket, netball, hockey, soccer, golf, archery, um, uh, swimming. And with that being said, uh, Tatiana Schumacher, I don't think she needs any further introduction. Um, obviously, a gold medalist winner at the Tokyo Olympic Games in 2020 for the 200 meter breaststroke, as well as one silver for the 100 meter breaststroke. And she is a former TUX student, so she's an alumni TUX, and we are very proud of her. Then we also have um, Michael Whiteboy, who won the African Judo title for under 48 category in 2019 and 2020. Uh, Sunay Lars, also a former TUX cricket player, and obviously now captaining the Proteas team in South Africa. And then Heinrich Klaassen also captained the Proteas in the T20 squad in 2021, which was also a former Tux. Um, student life at Tux. Now, 
grade twelves, um, it's going to be the best time of your life. Um, so much so that I mean, we have societies, one hundred five societies you can belong to. Um, we have symphony orchestra. We have choirs you can belong to. There's even the Tux FM. Should you want to become perhaps a radio disc jockey, you can kick it off at Tux FM. But it's your playing field. And I always say, once your student life is over, it's over. You can never turn back the hands of time. So make the best of it. Um, and don't be recluse, just go to class and then go home. Become part. This is probably where you're going to meet your best, your new best friends. Um, great Wells, for those that, of you who um, obviously the um, Valentine's Day probably went not well this year and was a, a bad experience. Don't worry, you'll make it up at varsity. There's more than enough talent. Tenfold, hundreds, thousandfold. There's more, there's more to pick than, than what you can handle. But but once again, you're there to study um, and you should focus. But it is going to be the best time of your life. We also have the annual RAG. Um, in the early 1900s, because Texas is this year 114 years old, in the early 1900s, it was very dull and boring. Um, it's definitely changed to the part you've only dreamt about for the first two months. Um, hopefully this will not be your friends, but yeah, these are the kind of guys that hang out there. But it's all in the name of charity. Um, floats get made and money gets collected um, for charity purposes. Um, and yes, there's a lot of social activities that um, are part of the whole RAG um, festival in the beginning of the year. And yeah, they're all part of the Tux vibe. Tux has um, residents at, at um, the University of Pretoria, um, adjacent to the university. What I would like to mention to each and every one is, should you wish to apply to the University of Pretoria? My advice is, when applications open, you should apply. My advice is to apply before the end of the first month when applications open. University of Pretoria sits with an annual problem of over 10 and a half thousand people that applied for res. And there's only space for two and a half thousand first years. And it's not just a problem that University of Pretoria sits with, it is across the border at all universities in South Africa, as well as globally at all other universities around the world. So please, should you apply to Tux for studies and you wish to apply for Tux residents, please complete your application and have your application handed in before the first, um, before the end of the first month or within the first month. University of Pretoria has nine faculties and one business school. We have the Faculty of Law. You can study LLB Law. We also have a BA Law and a BCom Law, which is a preferred and um, a recommended degree you should opt for before even considering doing, doing an LLB. But you can also study actually any um, degree at the University of Pretoria, even perhaps a BSc genetics degree, and then go into the forensic side and then complete your LLB after that. We also have economic and management sciences faculty incorporating accounting, investment management, financial um, sciences, marketing management, business management, supply chain management, economics, and so forth. Then we have the engineering, built environment, and IT faculty. It's three schools within one faculty. We got nine different engineering degrees from mechanical, civil, industrial, computer. Then our built environment, which incorporates uh, fields of study such as architecture, quantity surveying, town and regional planning, real estate, and then IT, which incorporates a couple of degrees such as computer sciences, information knowledge systems, multimedia, and so forth. Then we have veterinary sciences. We're also the only university in um, South Africa that offer veterinary sciences. I know that Namibia and UNAM is also busy with a veterinary sciences uh, faculty or school, um, which is in any case also being um, put together with a lot of our vet sciences graduates as well as professors in order to get it up and running. But at present, the University of Pretoria still recruits students from Namibia for veterinary science studies. And we also have education, the educational faculty for three study fields there, your foundation phase, intermediate and senior phase studies, theology and religion for those perhaps wanting to become theologians um, into the ministry field. I always say um, it's not a career, it's a calling, so it's not for everyone. 
But believe it or not, there are three or four universities in South Africa that offer theology and the faculty is chock and block full. In the last five years, I've, I've, been, um, I've been stunned by, by seeing the number of applications we've received for theology and the faculty being you know, oversubscribed. Then we have the Natural Agricultural Sciences faculty, your BSc faculty. We have five schools within which is your biological sciences school, more your laboratory work, research, and so forth. Then we have your agricultural sciences school, then your consumer sciences school, your physical sciences school, which incorporates things like chemistry, physics, geography, geoinformatics, geology, meteorology. And then lastly, our mathematical school, which uh, incorporates things like actual sciences, applied maths, math statistics, and so forth. Humanities for more the people orientated uh, people out there that you know um, the social butterflies, um, if I can put it that way. Studies such as psychology, philosophy, criminology, drama, music, international studies, politics. Uh, we also have um, speech and language pathology and audiology offered at the University of Pretoria's Humanities Faculty. Um, we do unfortunately. Um, we do not offer everything. I know other universities have also presented, and we perhaps don't offer, um, which will, I will talk about now in the health sciences faculty, we do not offer optometry. But in the health sciences faculty, we have fields such as dentistry, dietetics, medicine, physio, occupational therapy, biokinetics, nursing, and so forth. And then our Gordon Institute of Business Sciences, also better known as the Gibbs Business School, um, offers courses and short courses for um, employees from companies. So once you work for a company, they can send you there at their expense in order to up your skills, to add more value to a company. But I always say, first finish school, get into varsity, graduate, get that job. And then once you work for a company, this will follow. Now grade 12, why should you excel academically? Now, as uh, Robert Kiyosaki says, you become what you study. Sex receives annually more than 46,000 applications. We can only accommodate 10,000 first years. So less than a quarter of the number of applications we receive, we can accommodate. Admission is based on academic achievement and only academic achievement. Not popularity, not how many times have I copied homework from my friend or whatever. It's based on academic achievement, as well as um, sports is not part and parcel of getting admitted. Now, very importantly, when you apply to all South African universities, which you've probably heard or will be hearing, um, should they still present, at the University of Pretoria, it's, it's no different. When you apply in your grade 12 year, your final schooling year, you always apply with the year, year's prior marks. Um, now, for those that maybe have um, tuned in, um, that would be your grade 11 marks for the for obviously the IEB guys. And then in your case at um, the private school would be the IGCSE. So that would be in inverted commas, your grade 11 marks. So you are provisionally accepted based on your final um, grade 11 or IGCSE marks, and your final grade 12 year, which is obviously your AS levels, determines whether you get admitted and registered for study. Should you wish to apply with your final grade 12 marks or your AS marks, you can only do so in your gap year. So no present grade 12 or AS results or marks that get received will or can be used to apply and get provisional acceptance. So you apply with either the grade 11 marks or then in, in other terms or in layman's terms, the IG CSE marks for provisional acceptance. Your final grade 12 marks is the determining factor. Reach for the stars. Now hard work does get rewarded. Uh, at point number 12, um, or point 11, based on the grade 11 IGCSE results, if you apply before the 1st of July, the year prior to study, and you have a 75% average and more, you're guaranteed admission to non-selection programs. And I'll get to that shortly. 
And if you have an 85% or more, you guarantee placement in a UP residence. Keep in mind that the 85% average is not a guarantee in the sense of that university gets filled up with guys with only 85% averages and more. It also boils down to first come, first serve. The faculties or the, the residence is not filled up with guys with only 85% uh, averages and higher. But this is just a sort of, um, you know, um, another method of also a guarantee should you have been placed for a selection course or a course that you've applied for being provisionally accepted. If you have an 85% um, average or more, you are guaranteed placement should you have applied for that. And then based on your final grade 12 AS results, all the static countries, you are guaranteed an achievement award ranging between six and a half and 40,000 Rand automatically. You do not apply for the bursaries or scholarships. This is automatically awarded to you. And then the Ducks Scholar of the School will, will also receive an additional 10,000 Namibian dollars. Now, how does one qualify for a study program at the University of Pretoria? Now, there are two sets of admission requirements for university entrance. First of all, um, in your case over here with um, AS, a full foreign conditional exemption certificate from the University of South Africa or USAP is required for admission. When you apply, you apply with your IG marks, but once you receive your final grade 12 results, you need to get in contact with USAF. I'll get the contact details and I'll show that to you shortly. Um, you need to get in contact with them in order to get that certificate, which you need to present to the University of Pretoria or any other university in South Africa when you commence with your studies in order to register you. Now, this is just a table in short with regards to the IGCSE um, um, levels and obviously the um, averages scored and symbols achieved. And then obviously IGCSE as well as the AS levels. What I would like to just you to uh, focus on for one second is this is just an example of the engineering faculty. Um, with the various degree programs, your architectures, engineering, and so forth. So in this case, they would indicate to you, and I will share the brochure um, with Mr. Diver, so he will be able to forward it to you as well. So you are the compulsory subjects for the particular degrees, um, as well as the levels that need to be achieved in order to be eligible to apply and even get admitted. What I would like just to do the, now is, is just to draw your attention here at the bottom um, and it states at the bottom hashtag only English with at least a C symbol on this level can be used for final admission all other subject requirements per faculty uh, must be on A or AS level for final admission before registration refer to the subject requirements in the table above so what does that mean in this case, for all degrees offered at the University of Pretoria across seven faculties, apart from health sciences and veterinary sciences, you can get admitted with English on IG level. However, you need to still get your exemption certificate at the end of grade 12 with your AS levels. And it probably would be the case that you would end up doing English on AS level. However, should it happen that you do not achieve a level C for AS level for um, argument's sake engineering, but you achieved a level C on IG for English, then you will get admitted. But you still need to have received university exemption and university entrance. But this only refers to all and pertains to six faculties except for health sciences and veterinary sciences. Here's the contact details with regards to universities South Africa for your exemption certificate. Um, there's the contact details as well as email and website details. So please do get in contact with them once you have obtained your final grade 12 marks. Keep in mind that you still apply with your IGs in your beginning of your grade 12 year, and this will only be able to be received at the beginning of 2023 or your, um, your schooling year that you have completed your matric.
No, it's not advised to choose more than the minimum subjects. Um, in the case of with uh, Cambridge as well as international qualifications, as long as you got university exemption on the minimum subjects and you have the, the required subjects, whether it be English, maths, physics, and chemistry, please keep in mind though, um, should you want to study engineering, um, as indicated in the, in the previous slide, um, chemistry and physics is a prerequisite. And it's not seen as an additional subject. So as long as you have English, maths, physics, and chemistry, those four subjects, um, you are good. You do not need to have any additional um, subjects or, you know, um, so physics and chemistry is not seen as a single subject. It is seen as a separate subject. So those will then be four. Mathematics ordinary or mathematics core. Now, as I always mention in, in, when I deliver presentations, there are two sets of students, not just in South Africa or Namibia, but Lobin. Um, and they are those who understand maths and then those whose parents think that their children understand maths and then push them into doing core maths and then it doesn't happen and you fail with flying colors. And it, sh it, it could even be the case that you would not need it as a subject um, for a particular degree or study field you're interested in. Now, just to quickly highlight what I just said about people who understand maths and those who think they understand maths, um, please have a look at the following video. Okay, so just perhaps for those people who um, and attendees that are in, you know, in doubt to perhaps take um, core maths, I would rather have a student doing IG maths meet the requirements to get in a particular degree than doing, um, sorry, I would rather have a, a learner doing um, IGCSE maths, ordinary level, than AS maths and perhaps not get into varsity. And it's not a prerequisite or a desired um, subject for that particular study field. So please reconsider if it's not gonna happen um, that you achieve 50% and more for um, AS level maths, I would really advise to reconsider and uh, rather stick to the IG maths. Now the differences between selection and non-selection programs. 
Selection programs, they close early every year. Applications close this year, 30 June, and academic selection is based on school results. There's also additional selection criteria, um, especially for the veterinary sciences program, where there's a value added form, um, which incorporates things like exposure to um, cattle, poultry, sheep. Have you been to an abattoir? Have you worked at a veterinary, uh, at a vet? Um, have you worked on a game farm and so forth? So more, the more exposure, the better. And then there's also portfolios and interviews for some of the other degrees, um, as well as perhaps um, auditions for drama. But selection process and provisional admission only takes place after the closing date. So they'll wait for everyone's application up to 30 June. Anyone who applies on the 1st of July's applications will be discarded and will not be considered. Non-selection programs, academic selection based on school results. Once again, consideration for conditional admission starts on receipt of application. So once we receive your application, the um, your application will be processed and you will get provisional acceptance. All selection courses, uh, which close 30 June, you will be notified the year prior to going to study. You will be notified by the end of August, beginning middle of September before commencing studies the year to follow. And then we also have uh, some non-selection programs in the Faculty of Humanities um, who have additional criteria um, requirements, as I mentioned, auditions and interviews and theoretical tests. And then we also have extended programs. And this is for students who perhaps do not meet the requirements of getting into a specific three-year degree, um, as an example, a BSc chemistry degree, we have an extended program where your degree gets extended with an extra year, but there are, however, the minimum requirements you need to meet and you still needed to have the required subjects, but just on a lower level past. Please note that no degrees at the University of Pretoria requires for you to write the NBT for 2023 studies. So no undergraduate study program will um, the NBTs be considered or used to admit any uh, prospective candidate. How to apply TICS, and I'm practically at the end. Step number one, apply as early as possible, especially if you wish to apply for residence placement, as I mentioned earlier. In this case, applications open 1st of April this year. It will most probably also be the case for next year, but please um, be abreast of and, and you know, visit the website on a regular basis. We, our applications always start at the 1st of March, but because of results coming out late, the applications also open a bit later. You can apply online, which is the only method of applying lately, is online at up.ac.za forward slash apply. And then the following copies and documents are required when applying. Copy of your ID, some of your either passport or birth certificate, and then your final grade 11 examination report or IGCSE marks. And then there's also a 300 and a million dollar application fee to accompany it. Once you have applied, you will get an email where you will be requested to log onto our website and create your own student portal where all correspondence will take place uh, from there on end. Uh, no more emails will be sent. So all correspondence will take place via student portal where they can inform you, you are being provisionally accepted for the study field. We are waiting your final grade 12 marks and all documents, portfolios and so forth that need to be uploaded will also be done via the student portal. So that is practically my song. Um, uh, attendees keep calm it's ticks off next and um time for some questions i thank you very much for your time um i hope it was informative um i'm going to open the floor for if there is perhaps any questions from your side Regarding studying for law, I just wanted to know which subjects you would need to 
study law and how long it would take to get masters and what percentage you need. So what subjects you need to apply to study law and how long it would take to also receive your masters in that. Okay, thank you very much for the um, question. All right, before we start with LRB law or law in, in, in totality, I want you to just to um, understand the following. Law firms, companies um, actually advise candidates that they would rather want um, prospective people within the law field to either study a BCom law from the commerce side or a BA law than doing the LLB. As the general LLB, you specialize in nothing, you're just doing law subjects. So what they advise is, is for you to either do BCom law or BA law. BCom law is more focused on the corporate side where you would represent a company with their legal aspects, um, paperwork and so forth. Where the BA law was more focused from the humanity side, a Bachelor of Arts in law focus on family law, labor law, child law, criminal law, where you represent an individual or a person and you will um, represent them in court. So after your BCom law or your BA law of three years, it's then advised to do the LLB, which is an extra two years. So it'll be three years plus two, so it'll be five years. For the BCom law, you would require a 60% for English, and a 60% for maths on AS level. Um, but in this case, as I mentioned just now, you need to have university exemption. However, at the end of grade 12, to admit you, even though you passed um, matric and you got your exemption certificate, the minimum requirements we can still admit you with English IG at 60%, but you still would need to have maths on at least a 60% um, on AS level. For the humanities side, only English is required on a 60% level. Once again, whether you got it or achieved it on AS level, we will also admit you um, with 60% on IG level. For the general LLB, which I actually don't even want to advise because that's not, you know, I don't want to advise you to even apply or study just a straight LLB. You would need a 60 for English, AS or IG, as well as a, sorry, yeah, a 60 for um, IG or AS. And then just to mention once again, you can go and study any other degree. You can even go and study engineering or a BSc degree or in the health sciences field. And then once you've obtained your qualification in a specialized area, you can then go and study LLB and work within the um, legal department within that specialized area. I hope that makes sense. Um, but my advice, once again, is rather study a BCom or a BA law or any other degree and then opt for the LLB after that. Thank you so much. Next question. Requirements to receive a scholarship. Scholarships, um, an average, you need an average of a minimum of 75%. Um, I will be sending Mr. Diver um, a international brochure for international candidates, obviously for ascetic countries who will qualify, but a 75% average and higher um, as shown and mentioned, you will receive between six and a half thousand Namibian dollars um, up to 40,000 Namibian dollars. And that's automatically awarded. You do not apply for it. You apply for studies at Tux. Um, should you meet the requirements, you get admitted for that particular degree or study field. You've met the percentage uh, marks required um, to qualify, then you automatically receive those scholarships. And then as mentioned earlier, um, the duck scholar, if he or she would end up studying at the University of Pretoria, um, he or she will then receive an additional ten thousand Namibian dollars. Thank you so much. Next question. Um, is that money that he mentioned? Is that to help you get started? 
Talking about receiving scholarships. So yes, so the scholarship can be either um, all of the money that you receive, depending on the percentage that you have currently. So the higher you have as an average percentage, obviously the more money they would pay to have you as a student, right? So the money that you receive can go towards your studies. So not all scholarships, it doesn't sound like this is a full scholarship. So they just give you some yeah. type of benefit to start your studies. That's correct. Maybe just to add, um, this is just a once off um, directly from school to varsity. Um, you'll also get credits um, and also um, a rebate on, on you know, the subject should you pass with distinction. I think it's 70% um, when you're at varsity. Then you'll also have a reduction on fees. With that also maybe being said, my advice is try and apply at as many companies as possible uh, for scholarships and bursaries. For the main reason, should it happen that you get a full scholarship, their terms and conditions could perhaps be um, for every year that they pay your school fees, you need to render services back to them, so you need to work for them. And who knows, you could even maybe at the end of the three-year term or you know four-year term, depending on the length of the studies and then paying your fees, they could offer you a permanent position, so then your foot is in the door. So you do not need to physically pay them back, but render services, work for them, and they could offer you a permanent position. So, and whether you apply at three, four, five, or even 50 companies, apply. Um, bursaries are available because companies need to um, make money available. And also um, it's, it's sort of community upliftment, enrichment, and they can claim that back from tax because of monies that have been spent for um, skills development and so forth and so forth. So bursaries and scholarships are available. And it's in any case to your benefit where you can get your foot in the door within this, um, a particular industry and perhaps who knows, even get that job you're looking for. Yes. Yes. Sorry? So not knowing what you would like to study. So could you apply um, and then decide later what the field of study would be? Yes, it's not a it's not a big problem. Um, what happens in the beginning of the year is, you know, a lot of students end up applying the year prior to studies at three, four universities, and in the beginning of the year, um, there's a lot of dynamics and things that take place in the beginning of the year. Other candidates who applied who met the requirement marks do not meet the requirements anymore. Then they fall out, so they forfeit their spaces. Some people decide to go to another university. Some people decide to change courses as it was now questioned. And um, so, yes, it's not a matter of that you are stuck. The only thing that could be a bit of a hurdle um, is the mere fact that it depends all on availability of space. So, so let's say for argument's sake, you want to study um, a BCom accounting or you've applied, but you know what, I want to actually move over to economics. Then, it is possible, at least you're in the right place, you have applied. Um, please do not even attempt to apply in January of your first year. We are chock and block full. So much so that you know applications get filled up every year sooner. Um, this year we had um, applications for some degrees. We had already seven courses that filled up within the first six days when applications opened. So, I want to mention this just now but i you know i'm gonna just you know let the cat out of the bag it's 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 imperative even if they are um obviously grade 11 learners now opting to apply next year when applications open please apply within the first two days it's unbelievable how many applications we received by the end of april after the first month we had 20 study degrees or courses that were filled up and there were no more opportunity for them to apply or any candidate to apply. So please make sure that you apply early. And yes, should you have applied for a particular degree and you want to change over, you'll just need to liaise with the faculty in the beginning of the year and ask them, you know, and obviously depending on availability um, in that particular field. All right, 
Thank you so much. I think our time is unfortunately done. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Um, once again, thank you very much to um, Soccer Moon um, Private School as well as to Mr. Diver and the team. And thank you very much for.